Assassin's Creed Origins is the return of Ubisoft's popular game series that I wouldn't say had a great installment since Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. In response, Ubisoft took a year off from their annual release schedule to truly develop a game that's worthy of not just release, but also the Assassin's Creed name. Let's see if all that extra development time has paid off. Assassin's Creed Origins marks the 10th entry in the long-running series, and this one takes place in Egypt, during the time of Cleopatra. Much like the name suggests, Origins is an origin story for the series, taking place at the beginning of the timeline to a time where the Assassin's Order is only just starting. In Origins, you play as Bayek, an Egyptian man who's the Magi of Egypt. A Magi is essentially a hero figure that goes around helping those in need. He's like an avatar figure, but without all the element powers. The story essentially revolves around Bayek helping fight off invading soldiers while also seeking revenge on the few people that have wronged him. All of these issues are pretty personal to him, but the more in-depth background information I give you regarding his urge for revenge, it sort of starts to dive into spoilers, so I won't mention them here. To put it simply though, Assassin's Creed Origins will take you on a 30-hour campaign that challenges your concept of right and wrong, and whether your actions are just or morally wrong. As for the present timeline of events, Origins does connect to the present timeline story, but much like recent Assassin's Creed games, it pretty much loses its focus on that and primarily is a story of the past rather than the present. While I was pretty invested in the present timeline during the earlier Assassin's Creed games, in the more recent entries I've lost interest and wished that they would just stick to either telling contained stories within different time periods, or at least go back to the story structure of the first Assassin's Creed games. No in-between. With all that said, Assassin's Creed Origins does a great job at creating an interesting story that dwells into narratives of politics, despair, and racism. It's a story that truly does showcase the world this game takes place in really well. If you're a history buff, or at least paid some sort of attention in high school history class, you'll recognize a few key pivotal people and locations from this time period. Much like other games in the series, Assassin's Creed continues the trend of having a massive open world that's filled with missions to complete and areas to explore. Taking place in Egypt, the world definitely stands out from other games in the series that took place in much different terrains in time periods set way further down into the future than compared to Origins. In Origins, you'll get to traverse multiple types of villages, discover an oasis in the middle of the desert, and even climb a pyramid. Aside from the new setting though, the world feels much more alive with things to do in the game. For one, there isn't any loading screens when you're traversing through the open world. The only time you'll see a loading screen in this game is when the cinematic cutscene plays out, or when you die and you have to respawn, but even then the wait times are pretty quick. The lack of wait and transition times makes the open world truly feel connected as this one single map, rather than segmented sections that make up one giant world. Each part of the open world is populated with story missions and side missions for you to go on, whether it's hunting down someone's lost drunk husband in a side quest, or assassinating someone for a story mission. You'll always have something to do, and of course with this being an open world, you'll often find yourself off the story's path just exploring the environments and hunting down creatures. All of this plays as part of a much larger RPG system that's woven into every single part of the game. At the top right of your screen is your current level, and this plays an integral part into the gameplay. Each mission, for example, has a recommended level that tells you where you should be in order to tackle said mission. Usually you can tackle a mission that's two levels above you, but anything above that becomes a challenge. They may not be enforced level gates for missions, but they essentially play out to be. Accordingly so, you'll find yourself going on hunts and side quests to further increase your level and better your odds at tackling these higher level story missions. My reception to this was a bit mixed throughout the game. There were times where side missions would lead me to pretty interesting side narratives that tackled real world issues in this time period while other missions were just simple fetch quests or assassination requests. They varied from being fun to feeling like chores at times, and of course being a side mission, these are optional missions though because of that level recommendation system, sometimes they became mandatory. It's weird in the sense where the open world of Assassin's Creed has never felt so free, but also so limiting at the same time. While I can go on horseback to pretty much any corner of the map I want, the higher level enemies in the area will guide me back to where the game wants me to be. Luckily a bit of variety is added to the missions and the gameplay through the many ways of infiltration. If you're tasked with infiltrating a base, you can pretty much do it any way you want. You're no longer forced to restart a mission because you've been caught trying to do a stealth mission. If you're supposed to take out a captain inside of a base for example, you can sneak your way to the captain, take them out, and then leave. Likewise, you can burst through the front door and try to take out everyone in your way. The game may try to guide you through its level system, but at least it doesn't guide you through your playstyle. That choice is all up to you. 
When you do decide to attack people head on, you will find yourself in a pretty strategic combat system. It sort of reminds me of the game Absolver I reviewed a few weeks ago. Unless you're using some sort of projectile, the combat is traditionally close combat swing, block, and parrying. It can get pretty challenging at times, especially if you're fighting higher level enemies, but I kind of like it. It makes the gameplay feel more strategic rather than just me smashing the attack by a near a crowd of enemies. Another added part of the gameplay is Senu, your eagle companion that helps you track down objectives, enemies, and pretty much anything within a bird's eye view. The new mechanic comes in handy for infiltrating enemy bases, especially if you're the type of player that likes to plan out their attacks rather than run and gun. Aside from the leveling system sometimes getting in the way, the RPG elements work really well with Assassin's Creed Origins. As you level up, you gain ability points that can be used to unlock new powers and buffs for your character. These range from being able to assassinate people as you fall near them to being able to drop a smokescreen after performing a dodge. You can upgrade the abilities that cater to your playstyle and your liking. On top of those ability points, you can hunt and gather resources that let you upgrade items that can aid you in battle. Upgrading things like your bow quiver and your blades allow you to hold more arrows while also dealing more damage. Weapons also get their own sort of stat system with damage power and quality rankings. There's even a rarity system in place almost like Destiny 2. You have your standard weapons, but you also have rare and legendary weapons, though honestly they never felt quite legendary. More often than not, a legendary weapon's most interesting quality was having a yellow shader background that told me it was a legendary weapon. It would often be outpowered by some other ordinary weapon I already had. Now let's tackle everyone's favorite feature in modern video games, microtransaction. Yes, yeah, sadly Assassin's Creed Origins has microtransactions, and they kind of suck. Now let me disclaim that my review copy of the game had I think 700 helix coins with it. This is the microtransaction currency used to buy things from the store. Now what really sucks with this is that while some of the microtransactions are simple optional things like being able to see hidden collectibles on the map from the get go, the cosmetic stuff is strictly locked behind the paywall. If you want to get a costume for your steed or your assassin from the store, you're going to need to pay real world money for it. There's no way to get it in game. That's a very dirty business practice. At least in other games you can sort of make the excuse that you can work and earn said cosmetic items in the game, but in Assassin's Creed Origins you really don't have that choice. If you want to ride a unicorn, you're going to need to pay up for it. Assassin's Creed Origins is one of the most beautiful looking games I've played this year. The Egyptian setting can be breathtaking at times with its large open world landscapes and vibrant village colors on display. I played most of my review on PC with the GTX 970 and an i7-4790K, and it definitely gave my PC a run for its money. I was able to maintain a close to solid 60 frames per second at 1080p with high settings turned on, though it definitely did dip to the mid 50s at times. On the PS4, the game runs at a dynamic resolution that usually sits at 1080p 30 frames per second. On PS4 Pro, that resolution gets bumped up to a dynamic resolution that usually sits around 1440p 30 frames per second. On Xbox One, that resolution is also dynamic, though it ranges from 720p to 900p. All of those console versions target 30 frames per second and usually sit there only with the occasional dip to the high 20 frames per second mark. The one big issue in frame rate that I saw were with the cutscenes. On console, the cutscenes would dip to the low 20 frames per second mark, and on PC, it would be in the mid 40s, even though the rest of the game ran in the near 60. I currently don't have an Xbox One X review unit to test how the game runs on it, but if anyone at Xbox is watching or has a contact there, feel free to get into contact with me, my email is in the description. Regardless, I'll try to update the information of how it runs on Xbox One X once I get that information and I'll post it in the comment down below. Aside from the technical performance, this game does have a few bugs. I've seen some pretty bad environmental pop and pretty much happened in every section of the game and every version of the game I've played so far. With the open world being so heavily populated, it becomes quite easily noticeable. Assassin's Creed Origins is most definitely a visual work of art, but unless you're playing on a very high-end PC or presumably an Xbox One X, you'll definitely start to notice a handful of technical performance drawbacks. The voice actors in this game did a tremendous job at making the characters in this game feel truly real. I mean, some of them were real, but you know what I mean. Their acting performance was executed well enough to convey real feelings for the characters I got to meet. It's just sort of a bummer that the bugs got in the way. Usually when I'd see a very personal conversation happen in the game, it'd be during a cutscene that's struggling to maintain a constant frame rate. Other times I'd experience audio bugs where a character would just repeat the same line over and over again while I was walking around in the open world. 
Assassin's Creed Origins nails things like the dialogue performance and the music tracks, but much like the visuals, they're hindered by technical bugs throughout the game. In the end, Assassin's Creed Origins is just an alright game. I think it's definitely better than recent entries in the series, but it still sort of struggles with its performance across the board. Certain gameplay features like the level gating and the open world sort of conflict with each other at times, and it can sort of start to feel like a chore. There's a lot that I like about Assassin's Creed Origins, but also feel like the gameplay elements need to be tweaked a bit, and some better optimization needs to be done before I can say this is a great Assassin's Creed game. For now, it's just alright. If that's enough for you, then go ahead and check it out. But if you're hoping for the series to return to its early shining glory, it's a bit closer to it, but not fully there yet. This new entry definitely marks a new direction for the series and where it's trying to go in the future, I just hope that the next entry does a better job at executing the gameplay. That does it for my review of Assassin's Creed Origins for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. If you do have any questions that I may have missed in this review, feel free to ask me in the comments down below or just hit me up on Twitter and Snapchat. If you like these in-depth reviews, then let me know with a like on this video and subscribe for more content just like this. As always, thank you all very much for watching, hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next one.